Well, shiver my butthole and call me Johnny. It's time for B-Movie Mania, where we're going to talk about a Yargi pirate movie. Yarrrrrrr! That's not good, because I have to say B-Movie Mania last. <laughs> Arr. <laughs> nope, that's it. Arr, movie Mania! <laughs> Theme song goes to Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Oh, guys, well, hopefully everything goes better than the ad intro uh, for this episode. Uh, hello and welcome, maniacs, ch- uh, listening in from all over the world and all seven of the seas. I am your host this week, Michael, your favorite, maybe, probably not, Hayes. Uh, and with not me, anymore. as always, is c- crazy Chris Hudson. Arr, matey, shiver me timbers and lots of pirates speak. Mm. And this B, <laughs> me favorite B movie podcast. <laughs> well, such praise Arr. from a member of the of the podcast. <laughs> um, Just also, my with, own horn. <laughs> also with, with us uh, is uh, Mr. Jason uh, Gangplank Holes. <laughs> <laughs> Yar, let me send my peg leg, matey. Yar. <laughs> <laughs> and also with us joining us again for a, a fourth time in a row this season is Mr. New record. Polly Parrot <laughs> Brooks. You realize this is episode eight, right? <laughs> but it's only the fourth time. We've just cut you out for the previous four episodes. Has he been in the first four episodes? I don't know. I don't know. Who we'll can tell? Go back and who, listen. who can tell? Hey, Mike. I've got a dick flavored condom. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh. What do you mean, Paul? What, what what do you mean? I mean I'm not wearing a condom. <laughs> like right I don't now? know why I would be for the podcast. Paul, in these times, in these dangerous and uncertain times, you're not wearing a condom. You need to be safe, Paul. We've been <laughs> condom teened. And uh, corn peened? Corn peened would have been better. Corn peened. Corn peened <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I better double bag it for this episode. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get any of those those dirty scurvies. No. Ugh. Well, okay, everyone. Uh, we, we watched a movie called Captain Z and the Terror of Leviathan. Uh, 2014 movie about a, a time-traveling pirate. and Well, actually... How about how about I don't tell us what it's about? Why don't we just ask ask the uh, doctor professor guy real quick, uh, Glenn? Oh, well, what's happening here is that 300 years ago, this pirate here actually stopped a band of demons from causing the end of the world. But by doing so, he got sucked into the dimension with them. Someone today has found the amulet that I was looking for, reopened the portal, which released the demons and Captain Z. It's fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Glenn. Thank you very much. <laughs> Very apt use of a clip. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, that's maybe the quickest one we've had. I don't know for sure if that's true, but... Well, well the, <laughs> my question is, is how do you know which clip to use for that? Because there were like, what, 10 explanations throughout the course yeah. of the Yeah, well, as you heard, Chris, because obviously we do the editing real time. Um, <laughs> this is the part where Glenn explains. He says, well, what we have here is a pirate from 1714. Blah, 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 and it just explains the entire premise of the film. <laughs> <laughs> that also explained things. Okay, well, this is a 2014 uh, indie, I guess, film. If you want, you know, effectively. Well, not effectively. It was indie. <laughs> it definitely uh, is. <laughs> yes. What studio was behind this? Uh, uh, well, it was Silver Spotlight Productions. <laughs> oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but but a uh, a filmmaker by the name of Steve Radzinski, uh, who has made various other films, most notably Task uh, Super Task Force One, and the Meowie Holiday Series. <laughs> he's got like 15 or 16 uh, directing credits, though. Yeah, no, he's done a handful of uh, indie B flicks. Yeah. 
Dino Gore is one that is coming out this year. Holy shit. Or did? I want Dino Gore. Anyway, we could go it's through. The, He's got some greatly named films. We're going to discuss the oh, uh, sure. the insides of one of them today. Captain Z and the Terror of Leviathan. The guy who the guy who played uh, Captain Z is the guy who produced this movie as well. So really? it seems like they are a, a team. Oh, yeah. And that guy's name, by the way, is Zoltan Zalai, oh. which is one of the coolest names I've ever heard. It's almost as good as <laughs> Billy Wizard. No, actually, it might be better. I can't tell. Zoltan well, Zalai. Do you guys want do you guys are you guys ready to have your minds blown? Because oh, blow me Zoltan, down, Chris, blow me down. Zoltan created the character for in, in a series of commercials for his dad's jewelry store. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a link on our website, don't we, Chris? Uh, we do. To Since this stuff is posted in real time. Okay, now hold on, guys. This is getting a little wild, especially, Paul, you're getting a bit rambunctious over here. I, I mean, can you settle down for us, Paul? Sorry about it. It's all right. But keep this in mind. I run a tight ship here, and I'll have I'll have no mutinies, and I'll have no backtosh, or ye will get the lashes, okay? So be good, and let's, let's talk about this movie in a respectful manner, or else there will be consequences, okay? I'm running a tight ship. Speaking of respectful, your pirate accent there, Mike, was just as good as what we heard from Captain Z. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Fucking... Arr, what kind of vessel will be this, Glenn? Think of it as a boat for land. Me, the captain, me should take the wheel. It, it hails differently from a boat. Arr, me can sail the Jolly Roger through the seven seas. Maybe even a little better. <sighs> like, was it a caveman or a pirate? I couldn't tell. <laughs> 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 it's, it's just, as, as everyone just heard, he just keeps saying me for everything, which I think makes sense in that generic accent we've heard, but he, it's like, me watch TV, me go home, or something. And it's just, it's fucking awful. But. Well, Caveman Z just doesn't have quite the same ring to it. <laughs> I hope. Wait a minute. I hope that becomes part of the cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah, Caveman Z is pretty good. Hey, uh, Captain Mike. Uh, yes, uh, Paul. Did you forget about quick takes or. or... Wow. So much for the tight ship. <laughs> wow. So uh, we're, we're doing this. Are we doing this? Paul? I'm just asking. Are you, are you, are you, it sounds like Paul's trying to mutiny. Are you trying to mutiny, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I'm trying to run a tight poop deck over here, and I just need to know. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, in that case, Paul, you are right. I was getting a bit excited about setting up this stuff up here. I did forget about what we like to do. Quick takes. Quick takes! Uh, Paul, what, what, why don't you give us a little quick take? Sure. My main takeaway from this movie is it's been too long since I've been to West Virginia. This movie was shot in West Virginia. Mike, you and me, uh, it's been, what, oh. seven or eight years since we've been out it's that way? It's been a while. Yeah, we, we, sh we should take a trip. We should go back. Yeah. Take us home. Beautiful country out there. My mom's from West Virginia. Well, Chris Hudson, is that your quick tank? <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick take. Okay, no, no, Chris, what's your, what's your quick oh, take? My, oh, my real quick take. Uh, okay, so there's a scene near the end of the movie where Captain Z talks about his father. Mm -hmm. He never met his father, but he always wondered if his father was good, bad, or a little bit of both. And that's exactly how I feel about this movie. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Mr. Hulls? Mike, I have a really good reason why I don't have a quick take. Okay. I tried watching this movie with my dog, and he was all like, woof. And I was like, I don't speak dog, you know? <laughs> then so I went woof. And then he went woof. And so I sounded interested by saying woof. And then he barked. So, Mike, I learned how to talk to dogs today. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Okay. Nice. Well, my quick take... Uh is that uh, there weren't enough Satanistas in this film. In fact, there were none. And I was unaware that there were no Satanistas or that there was a thing called Satanistas until someone in this film said there were Satanistas, but they were not part of this film. And so I instantly was disappointed. <laughs> mm. It's got a nice ring to it. It really yeah. does. Uh, oh, well. Sequel, maybe. Oh, God, I pray. 
Anyway, <laughs> so it's so it was seventeen fourteen. It's now twenty fourteen. Great year. Great great year, Paul. Tell us about it. I was moving to no, Los Angeles no. at the time, <laughs> and huh? Tell us about Riverwood, Ohio, in twenty fourteen. Um. It looks like a nice place. Mm -hmm. It was actually shot in West Virginia, where I would like to go back to sometime soon, if anybody wants to take a trip. Um, is that enough? Or Paul, would you say that the people there love their Captain Z days? <sighs> oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, so, so much like Point Pleasant, West Virginia has Mothman, and much <laughs> like, uh, I don't know, what's the other one that they say? Some, another one. Oh, yeah, it's whatever. Roswell. They talk about Roswell. Right, right, right. Roswell. Yeah. Their thing is Captain Z. He is sort of the local legend in this uh, small town in Ohio as, you know, a pirate from 300 years ago or whatever. And uh, people are into him. Yeah. So Captain Z Day is a thing in this town, much like Captain Picard Day is on the Enterprise D. <laughs> Hey, Mike, this is a pretty good place to plop in the uh, Heather saying, why is there a pirate in Ohio? I think you did a great job already, Chris. <laughs> I mean, you sounded very good right there. I, yeah. You sound just Thank like you. Heather. <laughs> just like Heather. So, Chris, who is Heather and why is she confused about a pirate? Heather is one of the three main, well, I guess four main heroes. One, two, three. No, I guess there were three. Four, I don't four even. Four or five. Four or five. There were a bunch of characters in here that really didn't do a lot. But there oh. were a few there were a few that did that carried pretty much the whole movie. And Heather is the red-headed um, girl who is very busty. ditzy. Very busty. Very ditzy. Works at the museum. At the uh, Captain Z Museum. And the, uh, the film sort of hinges around her. Yeah. She's kind of the... Uh... I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a writing doctor. Uh, Paul J. What? What? Who is Heather? In a sc screenplay She's one of sort the, of thing. Um, as they say, main characters. <laughs> <laughs> That's the technical term. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and God, God's bless her. I know. I know she's trying hard. Um, but she has a tendency to spike the lens just about more than anyone else I've seen in a movie. <laughs> Well, that's the technical term, Mike, for looking at the camera. Oh, I thought it just was oh. looking into my soul. <laughs> that too. <laughs> uh, so, but, and, and, and there's this whole, like, we meet a couple characters at the beginning that literally have nothing to do in the film except for <laughs> throw a party, which is a scene that didn't need to happen. <laughs> And <laughs> in broad daylight, in broad daylight, in broad daylight, and then like to save the, the day, but they're just gone for the whole time until the end, and they show like it's just kind of you know, hey, but, but hey, we're not here for the writing. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, do you think that party was raging so hard that it went through the entire night and into the next afternoon? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so these people all work at a museum. Uh, which is seems to be located in a like a, uh, a community center, like the basement of a community center, or something. I thought the building actually. I, I watched the beginning of it again, and I thought the sign said toy museum, and the actual <laughs> building said it was an old high school. But whatever. I mean, that's probably just stuff they. Couldn't According to the behind the sure. scenes video that I found, uh, they filmed it inside a t a toy train museum. Yes, that's what it said. Toy yeah. train museum. Oh. Thank you. It said that on the sign, by the way. That's that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> so so all these 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 people of the same age, except for the one old guy who runs the museum. Okay, hold on, Mike. I'm sorry. What you said the one old guy, but he's not old. There's there there's a real um. Okay, I'm gonna put this. Try to say this diplomatically. This <laughs> it, no no. It felt like it was kind of like a theater crew sure and, and so everybody got a role because the thing that confused me throughout the movie which i'm not i don't think was even necessary to do is that certain characters that are clearly nearly the same age as everybody else in the room yeah are referring to them as kids yeah like hey if you kids can do this and if you could i'm like man you're like hit their age like what are you doing and so the guy when you say the old guy 45 maybe oh, when everyone else is in their in their <laughs> late 20s, I'm guessing, maybe early 20s. And on top of that, Jay, and I think probably the bigger beef that you have is with the character we're going to meet in a minute, 
who is the same age as everyone else and does refer to everyone else's kids. <laughs> that's the most <laughs> obvious example of what I'm talking about. And, and that, so that to me is just like, I'm not sure why you would, it doesn't matter if the professor guy is young, no. you know, like it's, it doesn't matter. Like who cares? So it, it was confusing that they chose to do it that way. It was almost like, well, we have the script. We were meant to cast other older characters in these roles, but we didn't, but we kept this, the dialogue is just how well, it came across. I don't know if that's true, but I tell you what, Mike, how about this? Let me hear it, Paul. Sometimes when we review movies like this, oftentimes the, makers of the film end up hearing the episode. You know, we put something out on social media and somebody finds out about it and they listen to the episode. Cool. Great. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you're listening to this one, props on making the movie because we know that it's difficult to get a movie made. And if we say anything totally. <laughs> that you don't like, apologies in advance. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, not to mention, to, like you said, Paul getting a movie done is hard. Steve, the director who, who plays the professor, he's gotten like 15 movies done. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Good guy job. has awesome. a lot going on, which is awesome. Yeah. Big props. Well, I, I think one thing that this ties to, not not th what you just said, Paul, though I 100% agree with everything you just said, about the age thing you find in, in, in productions uh, many times, mm -hmm. is I think there's a psychological situation where where younger generations don't feel like you can be accomplished while you're younger and you have to be old to accomp be accomplished. So so this guy who's supposed to be a professor or a doctor is supposed to be you can't be that unless you're old apparently. But no, you could be mm. an accomplished professor or a doctor or or someone who studies the paranormal like uh, Glenn in this film does by an early age. You can. I mean, sure. he, and 29's not that young. Like it's young, but it's not that young or however old, you know, whoever is or whatever. But like and I think that's a psychological thing that a lot of younger people have and then you so you're like we don't have someone else to cast. You know what I think the problem is is that I mean, I think everyone who made this movie is a little bit younger than we are, but they didn't grow up with Doogie Hauser, knowing that <laughs> someone could be a doctor in their teenage years. They didn't have that sort of role model showing them that it could be done. Fair. Okay. Wow. Well, there's a real, real gap in society yeah. that we need a new Doogie. We Hauser. need a new Doogie. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So anyway, yes, yes, yes. So there's everyone's about the same age in this film. Um. But that's what you also do when you're working with your friends also, which sure. I think is probably what a lot of this is as well. Um, I don't know. Heather had to, like the actress who played Heather had to audition for her. Wow. Role. Very nice. So, yeah. So I don't think this is necessarily a group okay. of friends. I think a few of them were, but I think mainly a lot of them had worked together on prior projects. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's probably local theater stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't get the sense that it was even local theater stuff. They didn't mention that. I know the guy who played Mr. Kincaid, the curator of the museum, mm -hmm. had worked with... Uh, Steve was his name, the director. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they they'd worked on some things before, and uh, there was the guy who played the redheaded hillbilly demon. He'd worked on some stuff with them before, but um, I didn't get the sense that they were like a local community theater or a group of friends just making a movie. That but they'd worked together before. Yeah. Well, and and, and on that they continue to work together because I do I know the actor yeah. who played Mr. Yeah. Kincaid is in uh, the 2020 film that Steve has made called a, a Meowy St. Patrick's Day, in which he does a Freaky <laughs> Friday with a cat. <laughs> the only reason I haven't watched it yet is because I kind of want to save it for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, my God. Nice. Well, I just want to throw out there, the the guy who played Mr. Kincaid did not want to act in front of the camera. He was he was the, uh, the cinematographer for this film oh. and had mainly just done that on the prior projects. And he was convinced to being in front of the camera for this one also, while also being behind the camera, and he was probably my favorite thing about this movie. I was just going to say, like, he, I was, he awesome. was one of the best. Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty great. He was really great. No, they needed an old guy. A really, <laughs> really old guy. <laughs> Speaking of really old guys. <laughs> Chris. Chris Hudson. That's me. Really Just old. had a birthday. Uh, Whew. No, oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Chris. Six, by seven. The uh, by the kind this comes out uh, two months ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but, but. So 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 Heather does the tours of the museum and other people have different roles in this museum. And then we finally get to meet Dr. Professor, Mr. Scientist, Glenn, who's Glenn who's Stewart. the writer and director of the film, uh, but also a paranormal 
professor scientist doctor guy. Mm -hmm. He has an extensive history with the supernatural. Yes, he does. So, so extensive, he does know that Satanistas are not involved in this one. No, he's a real dick to Heather when she's just trying to give her, she's the guide, and she's just trying to explain to the, the audience who Captain Z is. And he keeps interrupting her in the most obnoxious manner. He tends to know everything. He is a bit of he a know does. He's a real Well, and she was real into him. And he's like, ugh, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, what's, like, what is the problem, what's his dude? his fucking problem? Jesus. He, he even makes a comment later that he likes redheads. What's the deal? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so jump cut to the father and son fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, they were just, they were some, it was a real tender scene uh -huh. they had brought their axe and their chainsaw to the dock with them <laughs> you know for fishing Chekhov's axe and chainsaw yep. they're God. chewing on chaw yeah yeah and which uh, i think was chicken shredded chicken it looked like oh <laughs> shredded chicken shot. i hope so because you don't don't do chew well no but you can find something <laughs> oh. better looking than chicken <laughs> maybe they like God, chicken when we made late afternoon and i had to have what was supposed to be dip in my in my mouth? Yeah. I just used gum. Yeah, but there wasn't no. a single shot of you shoving it into your mouth. <laughs> no, but you did see the gum a couple times, which looks silly. Ah, uh, well, you know. Hey, you spiked the camera with your gum. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. They, yeah, they're drinking some brews. Mm -hmm. um, this is another situation where the dad is pretty much the same age as yeah. the son. But whatever. And uh, Paul, good old Paul pulls a special magic amulet out of the river. I, I mm -hmm. believe the technical term for what he catches, Jay, was that Paul caught a big son of a bitch. Yeah, he does. <laughs> what? I got something, boy. I got something. Feels like a big son of a bitch. Ooh, it's probably one of them giant catfish big as a dog. <laughs> sure, great. Which is just a <laughs> small amulet. Yeah. So this is where they take that big long shot of the axe and chainsaw for some reason, and then they go home excited about this amulet. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But they go home in a car that has like a garbage bag. For a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure that was probably somebody's real car, but I love that. Yeah. I did love that. It was pretty great. Uh, they get home, share it with the family, and then uh, a, an actual. I, I thought a pretty great kind of send up to a trope that is common where someone just reads an inscription and then something magical yeah. happens. They, that <laughs> happens here. Uh, Betty mm -hmm. Lou reads the inscription on the back of the amulet. It summons the demons from the past uh, to which when the demon comes back, they do go, humans are so dumb. Why do they always do that? Which was, a <laughs> I thought, a pretty great little, uh, it was pretty little, nice. uh, yeah. little jab. Well, the, and wait, did we, so the, the family is now hosts for the same demons that we saw in yeah, the past. Yeah, exactly. The, ho the demons that came back took over the bodies of the hillbilly family. Mm -hmm. uh, and, except one other person has now shown up. Paul? Paul? Jesus. <laughs> Paul, don't make me. Don't Paul. make me. Paul, say DJ Seahoove. It's DJ Seahoof, yeah. Um, I feel like that's a trap. I'm going to go with Captain Z. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Z is correct. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, yeah, Captain Z's there as well, hanging out under the dinner table after he gets sent back or sent forward yeah. to, to in time. Seemingly missing no no days. Like, it just seemed to be instant for these, these uh, creatures. I was kind of wondering why captain z didn't just chop all the heads off the demons while they were unconscious well yeah and he shot yeah. one like <laughs> yeah he did he shot one in the face and cut the head off of another oh, one so good to escape yeah i don't think he knew i think glenn knew that you could kill them when they're still cooking but i don't think captain z knew that when he was summoned i suppose i mean yeah, we don't really know what captain z knew or didn't know yeah all I know is that he's he newly lost his houseboat and he's stranded in a strange time. Yeah. Yeah. He so so yeah, he they see the amulet, he grabs the amulet, shoots one, cuts the head off in uh, fantastic practical effects. Well, um <laughs> <laughs> What, Paul? What do you have to say about it? No, uh, hey, I mean, obviously this is a low budget movie, so I wasn't expecting much in terms of the effects, but yeah, you know, it's your typical digital blood and not Photoshop, but, you know, whatever. Uh, what would the equivalent be? Motion or mm -hmm. After Effects, you know, something like that. It's 
it's pretty uh what, what would the word be it's a little budget yeah there was, I mean, yeah, there was some masking on it, so there was some digital stuff. But and I forget if this shot specifically had. There was a few gory-ish stuff like this well, in there. This shot spiked my peepers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, but there was some definitely some stuff that had non-digital blood spraying. It would cut stuff off. I forget if this scene had that or not. But right, but, I uh, think it was a little of both. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you gotta you gotta taint it one way and the other. Yeah, but. Uh, I, I was really excited about that. Uh, I wanted more and more of that. <laughs> that happened because I, I didn't realize this movie was going to be one of those types of movies. Captain Mike, can I can I talk about my favorite part of the movie, which is happening right now? Yes, please. Believe it or not. I, I thought I. OK, I did legitimately laugh out loud here. I think the, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there's a scene so where um, Captain Z is running through the streets from these demons and he bumps into a guy who's just standing <laughs> yes. on the street with a phone. Yes. Oh, yeah. Talking on the yes. phone. Yes. Okay, no big deal. He just runs by. Yeah. And then the demon, the mother of the family, gets up and chases Captain Z and is running through the same environment and runs up to the same guy who's still on the phone. And so casually <laughs> runs up, snaps his neck, and keeps running. <laughs> very rude. Was, I yeah. thought that was very, very funny. Yeah, yeah, very rude, but a fun little gag. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty good gag. I, yeah, I certainly, uh, yeah, I took note of that, absolutely. Um, so, so Captain Z gets down to the riverfront and meets up with, uh, what's his name? Mr. Kincaid, Glenn Stewart, uh, and Glenn and Heather, who are giving a little tour so that uh, Doctor Medical Professor Man can, I don't. know. He research. was tracking down the whole case, right? Yeah, like he knew yeah. something was going on. And he's like, "We got to go to the river." Yeah, and he basically summons Captain Z in a sense, effectively, and they do that. If only someone was here to bring it to us right now. Why did you stop talking? Is something wrong? You know, it's just that in movies, when you say something like that, someone would actually run up with it. I was hoping that we could avoid searching for it for the next three hours. Huh, a little late, but I'll take it. You should play that clip. I did. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> good, Jay, good if, job, you, Mike. if you keep mentioning it after I've already done it, I'm sorry. There's going to be repercussions. I, should, I need, need to pay more attention. I don't want to walk the plank. Don't. Okay. Make me. All right. Run in a tight ship, Jay. <laughs> it's a very, it's the tightest ship I've ever seen. Anyway. So, so the zombies come up. Uh, someone punches uh, Mr. Kincaid through the heart, which is pretty good. Right, yeah. Gets him right in the stomach yeah. heart. Yeah, right right, that's what I wrote it's down, sad. stomach heart as well, because it's yeah. the heart. <laughs> the uh, that's the saddest moment in the film. Yeah. He gone. So, so then... They uh, they leave and they're gonna go meet up with everyone else and I think probably of anyone Paul Brooks is probably the most qualified to to talk about oh god how they're gonna go you know where they're gonna go after you have a fight like a, a situation like this where do you go <laughs> after this what what happens what do you do what's the most important part um the most important part is um. Going to a party. Yeah. I'm going to say going to a yeah. party. Because Captain Z wants to go to a party. He finds out that there is a party going oh. on somewhere. He wants some rum. Mm -hmm. And so they go hit up uh, a party in what looks to be a house. Yeah. Well, to be fair, uh, Professor Mr. Scientist Glenn Stewart wants to go back to the museum and get his books to do his research. Mm -hmm. Heather right. wants to go to the party, and she convinces Captain Z to go to the party, too, because that's the place with the rum and women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, and Glenn says, no, we can't. We have to go do this. And Captain Z puts a gun to his face and says, no, we're going to the party. R. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, go to this party... <laughs> And Paul, it is Paul, I don't, again I don't mean to in the Paul, middle of the day. Paul, I just need to interrupt real quick. Wait, wait, hold Paul. on, Chris, hold on. He interrupted me, but he did a good thing. So he's Paul's now my first mate. All right, Paul, first mate, Paul. Oh, God now, Chris, it. you just interrupted him for Ugh. doing a good thing about keeping us on track and keeping a tight ship. So this better be goddamn good. Oh no, Paul. Yeah. Do you like to get wasted? <laughs> Damn it, it's fine. Damn it, it's fine. 
I do, as do the characters in the film. And they uh, <laughs> proceed to drink at this party. And it's um, thrown by the guy that we see at the beginning who is saying inappropriate things about titties. Titties. <laughs> hey, and don't forget about DJ Seahoove. Well, yeah, that's this is where you see DJ Seahorn or whatever his name is. <laughs> Everybody get in the groove because you got to move to DJ Seahoove. Titties. Titties. Anyway, I think more importantly, the person we should talk about is the woman that Captain Z hits on. Because there's there's this beautiful scene that I thought was going to go terribly. Because it starts out with Captain Z hitting on this woman and interrupting a, a couple talking. And I'm like, ah, geez, we're back to the beginning of the film where there's this, like, sexism or misogyny. And it's, well, hello, me young lady. Are you supposed to be a pirate or something? I. You ever want to sleep with the captain of the sea? Whoa. I don't know if you noticed this, buddy, but she's with me. Well, me lass, it's been 300 years. What do you say? Dude, you have no idea how much I like pirates. What saves that whole interaction is that woman just looks at the camera and she's like, you have no idea how much I love pirates. <laughs> and is so excited, <laughs> grabs him by the hand and yanks him upstairs to fuck. And this is a pretty good bit. If I may say. Plus, think about it from his point of view. His girlfriend was left tied to a tree in 1714. What? It's been an hour from his point of view. Yeah, great, <laughs> great. great you know what, Chris? You're first mate now. Sorry, Paul. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's fine. I'll go scrub the poop deck. What was your take, though, Mike? I mean, you know, you're a, you're a pretty progressive guy. What was your take on some of the you know, kind of inappropriate, kind of dated humor that was going on throughout this thing. You, Paul, do you mean something like the dick-flavored condoms? <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I. It was more of a, a wow factor <laughs> for me. <laughs> Going to take a pass on that is what you're saying? I mean, yeah, I, I could have done without it. Yeah. It, it didn't serve any sort of purpose. Well, remember, this was made in a different time. Yeah. Barely. Four, five years ago. <laughs> From now, yeah. People could go outside and do stuff. So, yeah, it was a different time. Can't go to a party in the middle of the daylight now. Yeah. So, anyway, they're having this w awesome party with Sea Hoove. Who is that really an MTV VJ? Or is that just. No, I don't think so. I tried to find him, and I th the only thing I found on Spotify was something I think was completely unrelated. But I don't have a Spotify account, so. Nah, no. I, I, I looked around too. I didn't see anything. Uh, either way. Uh, the Hicks show up, the, the demon Hicks show up, and uh, that's where you get your dick-flavored condom bit. Yep. <laughs> yeah, God. and JT with more inappropriate um, conversation well, he... in front of this girl's... I mean, he doesn't know they're demons. Yeah. He's yeah. saying this stuff in front of her dad and brother. Yes. Yeah. Well, he does pay for it, though. He does pay for it and even says... Hey, shut up. I'm trying to hit on your sister. I'm trying to sleep with your sister or something like that. A line I didn't edit in. Thank you. Well, he says, I'm trying to bang your sister. So Chris did a fine job. That's what it is. Yeah. Good job, Chris. Yeah. You're great. Yeah. Well, I'm here. Well, just edit me in there where you need the quote. I'm trying to bang your sister. <laughs> <laughs> that was great how that was this weird time loop that just happened. <laughs> Fuck me. Anyway. Uh, so this is where we first hear about Rosa, which I, I don't know who she is. I think it's the first time we hear about Rosa. It's the chicken, dude. Well, I find out later. Did you know at this point? I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You just <laughs> reprimanded your captain without knowing? I didn't reprimand you. Well, it sounded like you had a bit you of a judgmental voice You are so far from there, first Jack. mate. I, I can't hear you. He, you, he, I'll, I'll repeat what Paul said, and I'm not editing that out. We're keeping all this in. <laughs> Paul said that you are so far from first mate, and you know what? He's mm -hmm. so right. He's now first mate again. Arr. Sometimes what I do when people talk over each other like that, you can just move one of the lines of dialogue back a little bit and give both of them some breathing room and then just cut it together. Paul, are you trying to give Mike editing lessons? No, it's, it's for the maniacs out there if anybody needs some editing tips. Wait, 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 hold on. I was mad at first because I'm an angry captain. <laughs> But, Paul, were you genuinely giving editing tips to the listeners out there? Getting them a little pro tips? Yeah, absolutely. First mate, first mate again. Back to first mate. Wait, you already first mate. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so 
So the Hicks show up. There's a big fight going on. Real quick, you guys are about as upset about Mr. Kincaid's death as everyone in the movie. All I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, No yeah. one gives a shit. No one gave a yeah. shit. No one called the police. And his poor son back at the museum doesn't even know. Well, in fact, Mr. Kincaid's body should have been laying there in the rest of the scenes of the movie when they go back to that spot. So the Hicks are fighting. Papa Hick dies. Uh, That happens. Who gives a shit? (laughs) Lots of things happen. You know who doesn't die in this scene? Who doesn't die? DJ Seahoove. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) <laughs> to see him later fact. in the movie. Yeah. Um, there is there is a bit, though, where the brother demon is confiding in someone. And I forget who. But he... <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, his sister. He's talking, confiding to the main demon. His, his in... Whatever, it's all confusing. Oh, yeah, well, this part was pretty great. I literally enjoyed this part. Well, if it'll let me and Boone go to that place with the magical castle, I'll do it. Why do you always want to go places? Oh! Well, excuse me for thinking the eternally dark abyss is lame as shit, but I want to see some of the cool stuff on Earth before the Viathan destroys it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's pretty good, man. <laughs> well, you got a little pause right there. Maybe you should put the uh, audio sample in right there. I, I already did, Paul. You mean the commercial? Oh, a commercial would be good right here, yeah. Here's 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 a new a brand new product that you're going to love from our friends over at Night Beast Industries. Night Beast Industries slash us doing the ad for Night Beast Industries. Take it away. With today's reality becoming less and less appealing and the current timeline feeling more and more like Hitler's cruel joke from the afterlife, it would be great to have a break from your present troubles. A break from the present would be more than well. But the government has made that all but impossible. With excessive guidelines and sanctions, the implementation of time travel is all but impossible. Well, now there's a way. With Night Beast Industries' new personal subnautic maritime travel vehicle, you can dive deep into the happier times of your past or submerge yourself into the warmer waters of the future. Yes, with Night Beast Industries' personal subnautic maritime travel vehicle, you can vacation at a time that interests you or descend fathoms below the surface of today and learn something from the dark past. You know, education, to better yourself, like a respectable human. Just go to bit.ly slash nightbeast today to schedule your test drive of the vehicle of the future. That's bit.ly slash nightbeast. Because fuck the assholes of today. Now it's time I, are, we, are we done with the movie yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, they go back to the museum. They have to fight the demons. Cool. All right. Uh, they meet back up with Neil, who's the son of Mr. Kincaid, who is dead, as we talked about on the riverfront. His body just lying there decomposing in the sun. <laughs> who's Neil? Neil's his son. <laughs> Neil's yeah, exa- no, exactly. Neil and Samantha are two characters we meet at the very beginning and then see never again until almost oh. the end. Neil is dressed that up like a... The girl who... Do- she doesn't like being called Sam. It, she, yeah. she is written so fucking poorly. It is... Uh... <laughs> Neil is the guy who explains a lot of the mythology, too. Yeah. Got it. Sam is just this mad... Mad woman about being called Sam, and that's about it. And but she then, in the end, does like Neil a lot. Like it, it doesn't play. But no. uh... and look, th- there's really no use for those characters because they're no. at the beginning, and then they're back at the museum. But they don't even take like they're not even in the the main climax of anything. Okay, they're just well, in a mid movie fight. There's one. Can good I say thing Neil's my... for? Oh, good. Sorry. Which? Well, no. Okay. We're, just this whole talk of who's useful and who's not. Can I my my major concern with like this whole thing is that Captain Z really didn't feel like the main character to me. No. He didn't he didn't really know that much stuff. Like I feel like the the professor Glenn he could ha- a lot of what he had to offer the movie can and should have come from Captain Z. Captain yeah, Z yeah. should be the guy saying, "Here's yeah. all this mythology," even if he's like this Pi- crazy pirate guy. He can still know about it. He know he lived and say it. all this stuff. <laughs> he, of course, yeah, he lived knows it. it. 
Yeah. Right. So so yeah. I, I just feel like the professor guy, I don't know if I don't know if you could have written him out entirely, maybe, but like I that was weird that Glenn had more to do than the titular pirate. Yeah. You 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 could have merged Glenn and Mr. Can Kincaid into the same character. Absolutely, that's a good idea. Merge those uh, two and uh, given most of the mythological stuff to the to the pirate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So anyway. Yeah, that, that was just a thing that had me kind of scratching my head. Yeah, sometimes as a director, you just want to be in the movie. Yeah. Hey, I... Either way, I am not going to have lesbian demon sex with you girls. <laughs> yeah, okay, so they're back at the thing. There's this weird stuff about that, right, Right, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I think Neil Kincaid's son is the only thing he's good for is a bit where he is always dressed up as a pirate, and it turns out he has he's had a real sword the whole fucking time. <laughs> Uh, which which I got a little chortle out of that. That doesn't really play either, though, because no, Captain really. Z, who's supposed to be a real pilot, a, a real pirate, also looks like he's dressed up as a pirate. So <laughs> this is true. Yeah. There's no but, difference. Yeah, but within the universe, he's supposed to be just a, a facsimile, and then he actually has a sword. Anyway, they use the sword to kill someone at some point. <laughs> that, oh, this is where the scene comes from. I'll take. Pr- I'm gonna take pride in gutting you, boy. Hmm. And also, yep. you got a purdy mouth <laughs> for no reason. After that, like <laughs> they say the rock line, and then, and then someone says you've got a purdy mouth, and then they die. And but there's no reason for those lines to follow each other. But hey, what are you gonna do? Oh, and then Sam That's and Neil right. make out, and then they go away. No, Paul, we have four seconds left, and then it's that. Oh, hey, you know okay. what, Paul? You, you trying to commandeer this fucking show? No. Uh, no, 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 no. I heard what you said. I heard what you said before. You said horseshit or something, and then you said right now, rating time, before I'm ready to go to rating time. You know what, Paul? You're in the brig. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. wow. That's pretty cool. We'll bring him out of the brig in a minute, but while while he's locked away in the brig, let's talk about, Jay, your groovy scene comes up, because they're back on the riverfront. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so this really is... really excited to talk about. Well, okay. Uh, this is the climax of the movie. Ignore the man in the brig, Chris, or what's your name, Jay? <laughs> we can barely okay. hear him. In editing, I have lowered his right. tone and muffled it a lot, so it's going to be weird appreciate if you react that. to the guy in the brig. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, so for some reason, Glenn lets uh, Captain Z drive a truck. It doesn't go well. They get back down to the river, and the demons show up. They have... Heather tied to a tree. They're going to do this big ritual. Okay. And this is the other thing, Mike, if I may, I just give me a second to go off on this. You better do The whole do it thing quick. is co- Okay. It's called <laughs> the, some, the Leviathan is in the title. Yeah. You don't ever see the Leviathan. It's always about to come out and it never does. They're going to, they're going to use it. They're going to use Heather to do this big spell. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to keep going? So um, I think the title would be better as Captain Z and the amulet of summoning the Leviathan. Yeah. Right. Right. And and so they are going to do it and it doesn't work. And then he picks up a chainsaw and says groovy like Bruce Campbell. <laughs> um, OK, so what my favorite part of this little bit is, is they uh, finish the movie with where they're going to set up a sequel by finding a compass for a new new thing uh, mm. that they're going to mm-hmm. do that I'm- vampire compass, I believe. Vampire royalty is my speciality. Uh, he said it. I don't like how he said it. Close in the break. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. So then they, they introduce a compass and vampire royal- royalty for a sequel. And then a pop punk titular theme song comes in. And uh, that's the end of the movie. <laughs> mm, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Until after the credits. But no one, I guess, watched after the credits. So we can't. Yeah, so no one can really talk about what happens after the credits. I saw it. Can I have a question about the scene after the credits? Yeah, what do you what do you what's your question? Uh well, okay, one thing I did notice is that the pirate is talking to this guy and is this like a Nick Fury thing? Yeah, it's 100% a Nick Fury. Yeah, the, the post credit sequence is exactly an Avengers thing. They're going to assemble a team and that guy is supposed to be Nick Fury. It's 100% 
uh, yeah, uh, okay. For that. Hey, I busted out of prison to tell you this. God I damn it! How'd you get... to tell you this? Wait, wait, Jay, how did <laughs> so the fuck I think did you get this out? ties into? I I've got the key, but this ties He's into very strong. I want to say this ties into uh, one of the other movies made by the same guy, uh, uh, Stalker Hunters or something. I Slasher think Hunters. Called. Slasher yeah, Hunters. I know. Yeah. I did notice that. And it's it, like it, he did a short it ties called into that. that. Yeah, it ties into that. I think he did two shorts on it. Did he? Or a, a feature and a short or something. So we're gonna like have a Steve verse. I think so. And I, I saw, I think I saw that Captain Z is in the short that came after this. Okay. Okay. The sequel. All right. I didn't watch it, though. That's Couldn't all find it. That's all good and well, but I don't know how the fuck you got out of the brig, Chris. So, Jay, you're in the brig. You're supposed to keep oh. a track of that shit. Get in there. <laughs> Fine. Hey, Hud- Jay, Jay. Hudson? You can get up. You can get up pretty easily. Hudson for defying all the orders, but for somehow being so strong, Jay, or Chris, you get to stay out of the brig. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay, it's ratings time. Rating time. Just to get everyone in the mood. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Everyone out of the brig. We got to do this. All right. Everyone <laughs> oh, out of the brig. Oh, it's in there. Chris, I mean, you were in there for uh, only a couple minutes, and I saw what you did in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> it was not necessary. Well, you know, you know. When you're thrown in the brig, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, guys, we have to rate this film. Um, <laughs> Poop decks? One out of 100 Satanistas. That's what we're doing. What, you don't want to go with missing cocks? Or dick flavored condoms? <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> listen, y'all do you. We'll see who goes back in the brig, depending on how I feel about your rating. But. I am saying Satanistas. Chris Hudson. Fine. Ooh. All right. I, I, I have no idea how to rate this. Um, <laughs> Who does? In Satanistas. <laughs> there was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Paul. You know what? First mate, Paul. Yes. Is Paul going now or am I still giving him Sorry, go ahead, Chris. No, okay. you, God damn it, Chris. Yes, I just promoted I mean, I, okay. him well, to first oh. mate. You still have to do a rating. Jesus. Okay, I'm doing my rating. Okay, okay. You're I have gonna no kiss idea the gunner's it. daughter if you don't why, fucking straighten up. Why did they film this in broad daylight? They filmed the very beginning, the early scene at night. They apparently had a miserable experience. So I can only guess that's why they filmed everything else in the middle of the day. Even if it was totally inappropriate for what was happening. The a lot of the humor really fell flat for me. And for such a short movie, the movie's only 80 minutes long. There's a lot of filling and exposition happening that just pads everything out. But every time I started feeling bored, there was a gag or someone said something that I fucking lost it at that I loved. So that, that saves it to a large part. I mean, I, I guess I enjoyed it. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Um, I mean, I'm really glad movies like this exist, that there are people doing things like this. I love, I mean, these people are clearly, clearly passionate about making this universe. I love that. <sighs> but the movie really didn't work for me in a lot of ways, except for, I mean, there were some, there were some bright, bright points, you know, some bright spots in this that I did enjoy. So I'm not, I'm going to give it 58 Satanistas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice discussion there. Uh, Jason Hulls. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of it probably kind of fell flat for me too. There, there's so much, the title of the movie, like makes you think that so much craziness can happen. And if you were to just read the outline on the page, it does sound pretty crazy. Like there's demon hillbillies and, you know, all this stuff, this crazy stuff, a time-traveling pirate and a chicken of death. But, like, I just feel like the parts didn't click for me. I-, I will say I am curious to see his other films, though, because it looks like he has yeah, definitely. Yeah. similarly bonkers concepts. Yeah. So I definitely applaud him for swinging for the fence, it seems like, with what he's trying to do. He's, he's going big with the comedy and everything. That's totally cool. Um, I just, you know, I wasn't quite into this one. So I'm going to roll with kind of what IMDB is doing with this. Uh, I'm going to say 31. Ooh. Wow. So 31 what? 
Satanist. Oh, phew. okay. Wow. <laughs> I was a little worried there for a second. <laughs> Just 31. <laughs> All right, Polly. My uh, my first mate here. What do you got to say? Uh, yeah, I think Jay got it right when he said that they were swinging for the fences here, but none of this worked for me. Um, the comedy, yeah. It's just not my brand of comedy, I guess, but I was going to give it 27, um, but I decided to try to be a little bit more generous with it by counting every letter in the title of the movie and having that be my score. (laughs) So there's 29 letters in the title, so I'm going to go 29. Um, Now, if I go Chickens of Death, Am I going to be in trouble, or is that? Can I do that? You know, do what well, you got to do. What you got to do. We're at the end of the episode, Paul. You go bonkers. Do what you got to do. Yeah, true. <laughs> Twenty nine chickens of death. <laughs> Paul, you've diverged from what was chosen, but I did bring us back, Mike. But I did love the chicken of death bit in the movie, so you're fine. <laughs> yes, you're fine. Yes. Still my first okay, mate. Cool. Still my first mate. It's like you you know the things that your captain wants and needs. Exactly. I think what you want and need is for your first mate to say, well, what, do you, what about you, Mike? What did, what did you think? Oh, what about a segue? <laughs> what a beautiful segue. Um, or a segue, as I like to say, because I've, I've, me've ridden the seven seas. Um, DJ segue? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fuck this. I'm doing this from the brig. I, fuck this. <laughs> You're putting yourself in the brig? <laughs> Okay. Can't hear you. Speak up. They can't even hear me. What do, what do I think about this movie? Like, uh, it, was, it was... I can't do this in the break. I'm out of the break. <laughs> <laughs> did you I, masturbate while you were it, in there? It smells like so bad. Like, Hudson, what did you do in that corner? <laughs> Hey, what's, what happens in the brig stays in the brig. Yeah. Come on. Oh. And I had to get the fuck out. Anyway, so... Chris ate some chicken to death. You know, a chicken? He ate a chicken to death, I think. It's my, I can only assume. A chicken to oh. death? <laughs> oh. All right. Okay, watch it, you two. Watch it. <laughs> anyway, so the movie, yeah, every, you, you guys said it before, swung for the fences, and that's my favorite thing. I love a swing for the fence, even though you're like, I only have this much money or this much resources, right? So, so that always gets me in my little my little pirate heart. Um, but yeah, a lot of the jokes for me weren't great. And it is hard to do comedy, right? They they say it's you know, they <laughs> they say it's hard to do a comedy because jokes are harder than like, you know, you could talk about someone's personal someone dying, but a joke is different than that. Everyone can connect with a death or a a something if you do that well, but you could tell a joke well, and it doesn't mean someone's gonna like it, kind of a thing. And that that hit, True. that that was you know some of them though fucking chicken to death. Uh, I, at the end we kind of passed over it a bit, but like the whole like does heaven does heaven endorse racism and demonism? Like, I think you know kind of a bit was pretty funny. I thought and, you know there there's some stuff that really struck me. Like Chris, you said you laughed out loud for a, a handful of stuff when you started the lull, something would pop back in, and I felt the same way. I, I wasn't horribly offended by the film, you know, in the sense of like sometimes you watch something and you're like this is beating me up by watching it, but it did lull, it lulled. And Jay, what do you, you rate put, it? Uh, I'm put going, me in the brig. What do you rate it? No, oh, you're in the goddamn brig right now. Fucking first mate, get in the brig. God damn. <laughs> Jesus. Anyone else? Anyone else got something to say? While while I wax poetic poetically about Captain Z and the terror of the Leviathan. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about uh, taking the escape boat. <laughs> yeah. Is it worth it, Mike? Is it worth it? So, uh, so in my heart, in my crusty pirate heart, hold on, let me get some of this rum real quick. Let me just... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, 
Actually, you know what? Hold on. Before I finish rating this, I'm hearing some rumblings from the brig. Damn it. Chris, God damn it. can you please do your captain a favor and go down to the brig and do whatever you did in that corner to Paul? No. no. Uh, you know what? I'm going to refuse this command because do you know what it smells like in there? Yeah. I'm not going it's back in there. It's your fault. I'm not going Don't back in there. Don't make me send you in there against your will. Oh, my God. I All haven't right. even rated this. All right. Oh, just rate the fucking thing. You know what? Hudson, oh. you're in the brick. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> All right. So, so this film, to me, was just a fun thing. And I've never felt so un, kind of unimpressed by a film, but so excited and interested to see what comes next. Okay. About fair. this. Like, I really want to see the wild shit. Because as you mentioned, Jay... My first mate now, by the way. Did I say you're my first mate now? I, I just assumed by default. Well, let's not make assumptions. Uh, <laughs> but, yes, you are my first mate. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but but he's got a movie called Karis Hell, which I'm really excited to watch. Yeah. Uh, these yes. cat movies, this, this meowy St. Patrick's Day movie has... <laughs> it's a freaky Friday spot with a cat, and I am there for it. Uh, I want to see what that is. And so anyway, so I'm excited to see what else is going on, but this one just didn't really click with me all that much. As excited about the premise as I was, and maybe that was the problem. I was too excited about the premise. Anyway, uh, 40 Satanistas. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm the high score on this one. What do we got? God damn. Oh, let's let these, uh, here are some mufflings and rumblings from the break. Let's put them back out. Wait, I'm, I'm uh, the high score on this one? <laughs> you are the high score. How, how am yeah. I the high score on this one? <laughs> Well, because you rated it more Satanistas than the rest of us. I guess so. Or Chickens of Death. Uh, Paul, are you okay? Paul, are you okay? I, uh, oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Uh, anybody got some coffee beans or something to reset my oh, sense of no. smell? <laughs> oh, no. Shit, doesn't... Hey, Paul, I've got just the thing for you. Why don't you, why don't you step in this room with me? No, 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 Paul. Is it Lefroy? <laughs> no. Don't do it, Paul. Okay, but we do need something for Paul, because I believe Paul has to announce what his next film is, right? Correct. On the next episode of B-Movie Mania... Jay, do you remember a few weeks ago when you said uh, we need a Casper Van Dien movie on this podcast? Oh, shit. Of course. Uh-oh. <laughs> Your prayers are about to be answered. Oh, Casper yes. Van Dien and Natasha Gregson Wagner star. What? In a Richard Elfman film. What? What? <laughs> it's the 1998 vampire comedy Revenant, a.k.a. Modern Vampires. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, I'm looking this up right now. Where can so I see it? We really are getting a vampire movie next. You can watch this for free on Amazon Prime. Is this movie about vampire royalty? Oh, this yeah. I hope so. Well, Looks isn't aren't all special. vampires royalty? <laughs> Is, isn't Casper Van Dien all royalty? Kim Cattrall, Indeed. Natasha Leone, Craig Ferguson, of, uh, Udo Kier. Wait, Craigie wow. Fergie? Paul, we Craigie used to watch Fergie? the Craig Ferguson show <laughs> together, <laughs> and we would just jerk off to that skeleton with a mohawk all night. It was <laughs> great. <laughs> Yep. And the so horse. I mean, the horse. Cast. Sometimes we jerk off to the horse. Yeah, mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Nice. I'm excited this looks for fun. Uh, a Richard Elfman movie. He is never disappointed. Oh, we love Richard Elfman on yeah. this podcast. It's great. Yeah. Hey, you can follow us on social media. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, all of them. We have Instagram. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. Look us up. BMM Podcast or B-Movie Mania. Um, no TikTok. We have Gmail. We have gmail.com. <laughs> B-Movie Mania Podcast at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. Paul we'll checks probably it out. Read it on never here. get email. If you shoot us an email, Mike will get a TikTok account and do a little dance. Yeah, Fine. He'll do that dancing if, thing. If a single person messages us, I'll do a TikTok dance. <laughs> there we it. go. <laughs> what do I have to live for? <laughs> Mike, what will you do if people go to their favorite podcasting service and rate us, preferably well, but rate us? I'll send them a personal greeting. Nice. Wow. Wow. All right. Through TikTok or? Eh, we'll, figure yes. it. we'll figure it yes. out. Yes. If someone does it, I swear to God, if someone does that and they say, hey, I just left this review and like, I, like, I don't know, mess, message us on uh, one of the social media things. 
I'll I'll leave you a personal greeting. I don't fucking know. Whatever, man. We'll talk about it. <laughs> what what if they buy a T-shirt, including one of the new Slade Craven oh T-shirts? God. Love my Slade. Uh, the Slade Craven, Craven t-shirt. t-shirt isn't new anymore. We got that Crank and Rankin T-shirt. Yeah, that's right. The Crank and Rankin shirt is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Those are selling like hotcakes. I am baffled. Well, thank you also, for designing the Crank and Rankin shirt. You did sure. a wonderful and job. And also, we haven't talked about it too much, but we also got that Chris Hudson, I just want to say real quick t-shirt. <laughs> <up there>. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's I love, my catchphrase. I love how in the corner it's like clinkies real quick. It's uh, like a little small thing. It's really good. <laughs> That's yeah. my favorite. I love having Hudson right on my chest, right close to my heart. I, I wear it all the time. I called my heart the brig of my body, and that's where I keep Chris Hudson. <laughs> that's, right. that's where I like to be. Okay, we have to turn this off now. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't mind being punished.